Hello serverless people, in this video I want to talk about one of the oldest services by AWS, probably one of my favorite, which is uh, Amazon S3. S3 was built in 2006 and stands for Simple Storage Service and I'm sure that if you're using AWS, it is in fact in some part of your architecture. S3 can be used for different use cases and, and actually in this video I want to show you 10 different use cases where you can use Amazon S3 in your application. So let's start with a very quick introduction on what is Amazon S3. And as we said, it's a storage service, more specifically is an object store service with unlimited storage. You save files in buckets and every bucket has a unique name across all AWS accounts. If you want like a more complete introduction, I've made a bit about it where I explain in 15 minutes the main concept of S3 and also answer some of the solution architects uh, questions. All right, let's get started with the first use case. Backups. So you can save uh, backups of your files or your database in S3. Let's make an example for uh, a database. So let's say you want to have a daily backup of your database or a weekly backup of your database. You can save the SQL dump into S3 and then if you need like a point in time recovery you can get the dump from the from S3 and restore your database. Uh, in the case of a database since um, you know restoring a database of uh, one week ago two weeks ago is not super useful you can even add the lifecycle rules to clean let's say the older backups of your database let's say you can add a rule that says for backups that are older than seven days, just delete them from the bucket. So you have a cleaner bucket with your database backups of the last seven days. And this is usable for your disaster recovery strategy of your database. Same thing can apply for files that you want to have a backup for your application. And you can even use the versioning inside the bucket. So for a single file, it can exist different versions of the file. So S3 as a backup service for your files or your database dump. Hosting static websites. Let's say you have a static website. It can be just you know a landing page or a React application. You don't need to uh, create a backend service with uh, spinning up uh, EC2 instances or have like you know. PHP or Node.js server that you need to run and maintain for uh, 24 hours, seven days per week. You can just uh, host the website in S3. S3 actually provides a, a function called uh, Website Hosting, and it's going to give you a, a URL ready to use. It only supports uh, HTTP, so it doesn't support HTTPS. If you need HTTPS, you need to put uh, a CloudFront distribution in front of your S3 bucket. I also made a video about it if you want to have a look. I'm going to leave it in the description. But with the with S3, you can, again, set an index file and an error file for your static hosting. And the great advantage is that this is like a serverless service, so you don't need to maintain any server. And your uh, website SLA is the same S3 SLA, so it's 99.99. .99. Sharing files with users. Um, so with S3, you can, of course, uh, upload files to buckets, and these files can be either private or public. But there can be a use case where you want to give or you want to serve those files only to logged users or only to users that ha are authorized to see those files. So with S3, it's, um, you can create pre signed URL which are basically a URL with an expired date. It can be, you know, you can set the, depending on the use case, you can set a 24 hours link, a seven days link or one hour link. So this URL, the, your uh, users can uh, see the file or download the file. So it's very useful when you want to share something uh, that is uh, not public, but uh, only available to authorized users. And this is called pre-signed URL on S3. The fourth one is the long-term archiving. So um, I haven't said in this video that uh, S3 has different uh, storage classes. So depending on the frequency of access of your data, you can decide which uh, class to use. It can be the S3 standard, that can be the infrared access, infrared access one zone and glacier. So for use cases where you need to store file for compliance, let's say you have a um, fintech use case, a bank, or healthcare that you have to store the files for let's say five ten years but those files are not frequently accessed maybe they, they access like once uh, every year or once every three years or only for like uh, compliance um, 
procedures, you can switch the uh, class of these files to a less expensive one, which is can be infrared access or glacier, depending on the um, frequencies of, of access. But by doing that, you have these files inside S3, you know, they are available and you don't have to worry about any, you know, servers or any like other storage. Um, you can save the files there and it's going to be cost effective to have them there. So long-term archiving is definitely one of the main use cases for S3. A similar use case to the long-term archiving is when you need to save files and comply with, uh, you know, regional laws, like it could be uh, the European GDPR or the uh, PCI when you need to handle payments method or HIPAA for uh, the US healthcare. Using S3, you have all these regulation uh, out of the box because you're using uh, S3 and it certifies for those regulation. So e with with S3, you, you can you're able to set limits on uh, the archiving data, on the encryption that needs to have for uh, comply with those regulation, and also on how to handle the keys to for the encryption. So let's say you need server side encryption, you can use uh, KMS, which is Key Management Service by AWS and it's all uh, integrated with um, S3. Or another thing that can happen is that maybe you want to remove a PII, so personal information data from the um, file that you save on S3. You can use uh, Amazon Messi. It's gonna do that for you uh, automatically. So you don't have to worry about uh, saving not compliant data to your buckets. So if you need to create like an FTP server or SFTP, so the secure version of the FTP server, there's the uh, AWS transfer service, which lets you create the um, SFTP server. But for the FTP server to work, you need to add an origin. There are two origins available in uh, Amazon. It can be an Amazon S3 bucket or, or an EFS, which is the Elastic File Storage. In the case of the um, Amazon S3 bucket, you can set the bucket as the origin of your SFTP server. So you can uh, upload, delete, update the, those files started from the bucket and your users that are using the SFTP server are gonna see the same data that are in your bucket. Using the bucket also has uh, other advantages because you can use, you know, events. So when you upload the file, maybe you want to uh, create an event and process the data in inside those files to just uh, put those files into a folder and maybe you can even like restrict the access to that folder from the SFTP server. I've also made a video about like on how to create step by step the SFTP server with Amazon S3 as the backend service. So have, you can have a look here. I'm going to put the link here in the description. And I think it's a very useful uh, service because it lets you spin up, you know, an FTP server without worrying about um, any, you know, system viability. It's, it's all handled by AWS in, let's say, you can spin up the server in less than 10 minutes, as you will see on the video. Application cache. So as we said, this is um, S3 is a key value storage. So you set a key and you get the uh, value, which can be a file or can be wherever you want. So if, if you're in an application, you need to save like, you know, a configuration file, as it could be like a JSON file, or you need your um, users to download uh, a configuration file when they log in or when they visit like a specific page of your website it can be useful to have this file inside a bucket and having them downloading from S3 directly. It's easier because it's scalable because it's uh, in S3 and it's completely serverless. You don't need to, to worry about the availability of the, of the file uh, because it's in S3 again. So this is like uh, something that I um, use uh, a lot, especially when I have like config file from my servers and I'm gonna have my server, let's say I have like a startup script and the startup script of the server download the file from S3. And also when I need, you know, to change the file, I just need to change the file from S3. I don't need to touch the server-side server code because the server is going to download the file directly from S3. Upload file without a web server. So with S3, um, you can upload file directly to the bucket. So how you can do that is by creating, again, a pre-signed URL and have your clients directly from the um, from the client side, so from the laptop, from the phone, to upload the file directly to S3. So you can skip the, you know, the web server. So you don't need your web server to handle 
uh, different files, like different size of files. Uh, you don't have to worry about, you can just have the uh, customers, your users, uploading the file directly to S3 using this pre-signed URL. This again has multiple advantages because first of all, you're not using bandwidth or your web servers to upload the files from the web server to S3. So you're not using the bandwidth of your uh, clients to go through your web server and then your web server to save into S3. The clients are directly saving to S3. You, you don't need to worry about, you know, CPU load. And um, it's also like quicker because S3, because your clients are pushing directly the file inside S3. And again, being on S3, you don't have to worry about um, any um, availability of the service so it's kind of a gain of a serverless upload and i also made a video about it so if you want to see how to do that uh, i'm gonna put the link here in the description that analyzes with atina so let's say you save loads of file on s3 and you need a way to query those files and find information uh, we have amazon atina that gives you the um, opportunity with a query sql like to query the files inside bucket, aggregate those data and get the data back to your service. So by using uh, a language that you know, which is SQL, you can extract the uh, data inside a bucket. So you don't need you know, a database to save uh, those data. You can put everything in S3 and then extract the data with a SQL-like language and uh, get the data back from Amazon Athena. For the last one, the 10th is one of my favorite because I'm, you know, I'm really into service architecture and I think this is like the perfect glue for your server application, which is basically using S3 triggers. So S3 gives um, events triggers that can trigger uh, AWS Lambda service. So AWS Lambda is, you know, the service computing service by AWS can have different triggers. One of these triggers is the S3, S3 events. So wherever you are uploading a file to S3 or you are updating, deleting a file on S3, you can set up a trigger. This trigger is gonna uh, fire a new Lambda function and the Lambda function, depending on the use case, is gonna, it can, it can you know, notify another service or it can even like um, send an SMS or an email to your customers or trigger uh, a workflow inside your application. It's really up to you. There are like infinite possibilities on what you can do with the S3 events. One use case that comes to mind is, I've, I've also made a video about it, is when you have your clients uploading maybe a, a profile picture, you want to have this profile picture with the watermark of your service. So you can set an S3 event that every time there's an upload for a profile picture, is going to trigger on the function and add the uh, watermark to your to your user's picture and as i said there are like uh, multiple infinite i will say use case on what you can do with the s3 triggers so we're not done yet i actually have a, a bonus point which is the 11th use case which is s3 select so let's say if you have a um, big file like a big config file let's say it can be 10 of uh, 100 of megabytes you don't want to, to download the uh, entire file to your uh, clients or to your server. You can use S3 Select. S3 Select uh, uses like a SQL-like um, language to query to query the file and extract the data that you need. So by using S3 Select, you can only download the portion that you need from the file and not the entire file, which is going to improve again the uh, speed on which so it's going to improve the speed in which you download the file and also uh, improve the performance of your server. All right, guys, that's all. I gave you 10 plus one bonus use case with S3. I hope they were useful. Let me know if you use uh, if you have used all of them, only a few of them, or if you have like probably probably I missed some of the use cases. So if you have like extra use cases that I haven't covered in this video, put it in the comments so we can have a discussion. Thanks again for watching and see you on the next one.